Well, I'm here at Eden Valley, and uh, I have a wonderful testimony to share because you know how God works in my life. <laughs> uh, he's amazing. He's amazing, and I love to, to glorify Him and show Him off because He is just such a good Father. But I'll get to my story um, with uh, how it all began. So, as you know, uh, I've, I came here to Eden Valley. Uh, I didn't just come here for the cancer treatment. My spirit was a little bit troubled. I've been struggling since a school has disbanded. You know, the, they're, they're pushing us out, telling us we need to leave. I had a due date. Uh, for me, it was really hard. So I had a, a lot of stress, and the stress is not good for me at all. It's not good for my multiple myeloma. The other thing that I had pending was uh, going home to Wisconsin. And, you know, I never really stopped to make plans. I thought it was going to be plans, maybe to stay there um, for a while. But, you know, what, what, what happens is when we start making plans and we don't include the Lord... Uh, Satan can really come in and start planting seeds that don't belong there. And then pretty soon, the mission that the Lord has us on, the journey that the Lord has us on, can be sidetracked. Because Satan wants to sidetrack us. So, you know, I still felt unsettled about going back to Wisconsin. I love my family. Don't get me wrong. This is not about my family. It's about me and what the Lord has called me to do. So when I came out here to Eden Valley, the Lord right away swooped me up in his arms and started working. Well, this happened about four days ago. We had a, a really good lecture. And at the end of the lecture, uh, the Kate, our counselor, was talking about dysfunctional relationships and marriages. And she talked about codependency and uh, narcissism. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening, and much of what she was talking about, I was, I already kind of knew. You know, I had, I had, I, I, I'm familiar with, with what she was talking about. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I know all this, I get this. But what I didn't get was that how it was applying to me and my codependency. I guess uh, I haven't been brought up to that place where I needed to face the fact that I'm a codependent person and I've been a codependent person all my life. I used to think that I'm, I'm just a strong person and I could do everything in my own strength until, of course, the Lord got a hold of me and changed that. But that's 24 years of being codependent. And that's a problem. So one of the problems with my codependency is I think I can fix everybody. I think I can save the world. You know, that's part of me being a nurse. That's part of my nature. But, but there's, there's a good thing to being nurturing. There's nothing wrong with being nurturing and uh, caring for others and being empathetic. Uh, but when it becomes destructive to yourself, when it uh, actually says, God, I'm God now. You can't fix these people. You can't help this situation. They need me. They need me to save the day. And I found myself doing that again. And that's not a good place for me to be because what that does, it, it gives the codependent a lot of stress. Even though they may not feel a lot of stress, they have a lot of stress. So that was the first thing that the Lord showed me. He also showed me something that really humbled me. Uh... You know, when I got divorced, uh, a lot of people made comments like, you know, you worked so hard in that homestead, and it just seems like you put your heart and soul in it. And, and of course, when I would reflect, I thought about all the things I would do in my marriage. I thought about working back in, in, in Wisconsin, how I, I helped my ex-husband with taxidermy work. I, I, you know, he taught me how to skin animals. I'm in the back room skinning out animals. I'm taking care of the customers. I'm salting the hides. I'm running to town for him. I'm, you know, you, you name it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm staining the building. I'm up on the roof, you know, painting the sign. And then we go to Idaho. I'm hauling rock and I'm uh, digging stairs and, and, you know, doing a lot of work, right? 
And even when we had our place in Lac de Flambeau, you know, who stained the house, right? Who stained the deck? Who did? And, and so here I am, I'm getting wrapped up and talking about all the things I did while I was married. Oh, I did this, I did this. And, you know, and I was a good wife because I served him. I served him so well. What wife would do all of that? Well, you know what? Kate says, that's pride. Just like a narcissist is full of pride, the codependent is full of their own pride because they're saying now, look at me. Look at all the things that I did. And what you did to serve whoever you were serving was doing nothing but drawing no boundaries. It was dysfunctional. It wasn't helping them any. And it certainly was pointing back to you and making yourself look good. Now, that's the, that's the dysfunctional part of codependency. And so I was humbled that day. I didn't realize that when I opened my mouth about my marriage and I reminded myself and everybody else how hard I worked and how I served my ex, that wasn't something to be proud of. Because that was dysfunctional. That's not a healthy marriage. And that was my fault. So the Lord showed me that. And it really helped a lot. So the next day I go to talk to Kate. No, the next day we have Brenda. And Brenda has us fill out a sheet about what our plans are. And I'm writing down all my plans about how if I go back to Wisconsin, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And my goals and you know my support system. And... You really need a good support system when you have cancer. And I'm, I'm writing this stuff down and I'm thinking, you know, if I get up, I might have to make my mom breakfast. And then, you know, my brother might have to go maybe to the store. And I already feel myself getting lost, getting lost a little bit. But again, that's my fault. And I'm thinking, oh, I don't know. This is, ah, oh, I, I yearn to go back. I long to go back. I love Wisconsin. But I'm also thinking about what this could turn into because of me so that uh, day uh, I went to meet Kate and we sat down and we talked about my codependency and we also talked about what the Lord wants me to do and she said did the Lord call you into missionary work or did he not call you into missionary work and I'm like that was pretty obvious he called me into missionary work the doors were swung wide open and she's like, well, then she says, I don't understand. You know, wh what is your plan? Is your plan to stay um, at your brother's forever? Is your plan to stay in Wisconsin forever? You know, uh, when you went back before, were you a missionary then? And I'm like, well, not really. Well, she says, yeah, and how did that turn out? You ended up in Wildwood because you weren't taking care of yourself. She says, us codependent people have a tendency to, you know, want to swoop in and save the day. And she said, you know, you're, you're going into a situation where you haven't changed. The situation hasn't changed. And you have to be very, very careful. It's not like you're going to waltz right in there and say, I'm a missionary now. I went to school. I'm still continuing with school. And I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be able to say no and take a break. And I know I'm not going to be able to say no sometimes and take a break because I didn't do it before. Because I felt guilty. And again, it's my fault. So that's the deal. She started asking some really good questions. And then she said, what would your dream be? And I said, well, my dream would be to work in a place like this. To work at uh, a garden, uh, Eden Valley, in Colorado, in the Pacific Northwest, in Idaho, in Oregon, in one of these states. And she's like, well, I don't understand. Why don't you just go talk to Chelsea? She's the director. And I'm like, hmm, I guess I never thought about that. She says, well, what's stopping you? She says, you're going to be graduating soon. You need to have a plan. Well, the next day, I prayed about it and um, got up in the morning. And here was the pastor waiting to give his sermon. And at the end of the sermon, <laughs> he went to Job and Job lost everything, and Job uh, had nothing, but then even when he had nothing, he still served the Lord. And then the pastor said, if you lost everything, would you still be willing to serve the Lord? And then he went into serving the Lord, 
God has employment for all of us. He said it. God is in the business of employing us. God has a job for all of us. If you are willing, and he said, are you willing to be employed by the Lord? And what you have to do is move your feet. And he, he gave us a, a scripture about moving our feet for the gospel. The, the feet of the gospel move swiftly. And I thought, oh, wow, this is made for me, Lord. So that was my very first confirmation. So after that, I ate breakfast, and I marched right over to Chelsea's office. And I said, I don't know. I kind of have this idea that um, I'm wondering if you got any jobs here because uh, I'd really like to come back. And she's like, oh, wow, really? Ah, yeah. And she was like, yeah, okay. She said, well, you know, believe it or not, Karen, who actually came from Wildwood, Karen, who came from Wildwood, is here as an intern, and she's leaving in August. I mean, can you believe that? She's leaving in August when I should be done with my schooling. Kind of coincidental, isn't it? So uh, here's Karen leaving, and she says there's going to be an internship open uh, for a lifestyle therapist. And, of course, that's one of the jobs that I want to do. I either want to teach, which is my first passion, or my second passion is to do lifestyle because I've been a guest. I've been in the trenches and, you know, uh, I'm compassionate about this. I've got a story to tell. So she said, yeah, we'll apply, apply uh, f um, for the position. And she said, and go talk to Phyllis. Phyllis is ahead of it. I know that. I'm, just, I'm excited. I had to share that because this is the, this, it's amazing how God, you think he sends me here for one thing. I mean, I really thought it was because I, you know, uh, things were getting hard for me. I was getting stressed. I was slipping up. And of course, I needed that. I needed to get back on track with my health. But, and he also made me realize, I mean, they told me, stress is going to kill you, Stacy. Stress is going to kill you. You need to make a choice. You're either here to work for God's kingdom and what he called you for, or you're not. And you're going to take the little bits and pieces of you and you're going to be like, well, I'm going to spend some time in Wisconsin and maybe I'll be there till August or September. And then, you know, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I wasn't even planning on doing anything after graduation. And the Lord's like, time is running out. You either are here for me, you're going to do my will and serve or you're going to serve yourself. And I don't want to serve myself. I want to serve the Lord. So now you guys know. Uh, please pray. I have really high hopes. The evidence is there. We had a, a sermon about when the evidence is there, when you pray, sometimes all you need is the evidence will be around you. And so far, the evidence is around me that the Lord is going to bring me back here. And I'm going to tell you a secret. I have a funny feeling he's going to use me as a teacher. But if he uses me as a therapist first, it's a good thing. Because I have a story to tell. And I could help a lot of, a lot of people too. And I could glorify God and what he's done in my life. All right. Beautiful hike. And I'm glad, oh, I'm glad I could share this with you guys. All right, I love you. And that's my Eden Valley testimony.